Hello everyone, we are in Pirkei Avot, uh, third parak, Mishnah 5, let's take a look. Rabbi Nechunya ben Hakana Omer, Rabbi Nechunya ben Hakana says, Kol hamekabel alav ol Torah, ma'avirin mimenu ol malchut ve'ol derech eretz. If someone takes upon himself the yoke of Torah, the yoke of government, and the yoke of worldly responsibilities are removed from him. Ve'ol ha'porek mimenu ol Torah, notnin alav ol malchut ve'ol derech eretz. But if someone throws off the yoke of Torah from himself, the yoke of government and the yoke of worldly responsibilities are placed upon him. Now, uh, there's a lot to think about, but there's, there are a few questions we'd like to ask. One of I'll ask and I will not answer, uh, but I'll direct you to where you can find an answer. And the second one we will take up. The first question is like this. The, the, the Sfas Emes, who is a Hasidic master from the 1800s, I uh, believe he was the second Rebbe of Gur, he says, he says, and, and others say as well, this Mishnah seems to contradict, it seems to be cholek on a Mishnah we learned in the second parak of Pirkei Avot, namely, Perak 2, Mishnah 2, which says, Rabban Gamliel b'no shel Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi Omer, Yafet Talmud Torah im derech eretz, shig yashnehem ashkachat avon. Torah study is good together with an occupation for the exertion of them both makes sin forgotten. Whereas our Mishnah seems to place primacy, you should learn Torah and all other things will be removed. How, how, how do we resolve these two Mishnahs? I'm not going to go into it, you're welcome to do so. It's in Tzvasem Tzvam Shirki Avos, it's an English safer, you're welcome to take a look. Um, the answer's there. I am Sham, I'm sure there are many other answers. We are not going to go there. Um, the second question that Nachlad Avod asks, which is written by the, the Bar Benel, he, he quotes he quotes other other mafarshim who say oh well the reason why these two in particular because the uh, once you remove the or once you have Torah then these other two will be removed and those are two uh, two fear responses to Torah learning or responsibility for Torah learning but the Nachlat Avot does not like that he says but you know why these two I mean of all of all things we could focus on many other benefits to to Torah learning there are other there are other bonuses so why these two in particular rather he actually takes a different tack. He says, no, this Mishnah is actually coming to declare um, what he perceives as a machloket from the first five teachings in this Mishnah. Namely, the very, the very first one, if we can say, say it says, remember, it says, Look at three things and you will not sin. Know where you come from, know where you're, go uh, know where you're going, and know before whom you will uh, be brought to answer. So that, he says, is the idea of old Derech Eretz in terms of you're looking around at the world and trying to figure out how to behave. That's Mishnah 1. Mishnah 2 is, um, right, a person should, be, should uh, pray for the welfare of the government because without the government, people would, would eat their, their neighbors alive. So he says, that's the Ol Malchut. But the next three teachings are it's about like uh, the, the benefits of Torah, learning Torah. A person should learn with two people, with even by himself, with three people. A person shouldn't be pona libo A person shouldn't just be thinking about nonsense. He should be occupied in his learning. So we see from the fact that there are three teachings about Torah versus the first two teachings in this uh, parak of Pirkei Avot, he says three trumps two, right? We pass him at the Rabbim, and therefore what this mission is coming what this Mishnah is coming to say is a person who learns Torah does not need to worry about all Malchut and all Derech Eretz. There you go. That's the Abar Benel. That's very beautiful. It's a very nice way of tying it in. And just to kind of add on a little bit, see what we can do with it, is I think perhaps the reason why that is, is uh, this is me speaking now, not, not the Abar Benel. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Um, when a person learns Torah, the way often people think of the government is like, you know, the government will come in and step in and take over responsibilities. Whereas the Torah is very much about our own obligations and our responsibilities to our neighbors. For example, we might see a poor person like, oh, why doesn't the government get involved? They should help them. It's like, okay, well, why don't you get involved if, if you have the means? And again, we're not expecting you to be wealthy, but you could buy me a sandwich, give them a dollar, something to feel a sense of personal responsibility for this person. Uh, there's actually a beautiful movement now where people go crowdfunding, right? People go to GoFundMe and uh, and they say like, you know, I, right? People get sick, people have personal tragedies, and they turn to the internet, and people come along and they donate and they help these people along. That's a beautiful example of taking on personal responsibility to help other people. That's what Torah presents. 
Now you might come to say, well, hang on a second, no fear. That, under, that explains why we can do away with all malchut, right? Why we don't necessarily need the government to get involved. What about Derech Eretz, right? Derech Eretz is, is very much about character building, right? So, so what's the benefit? So there are two possible answers I want to posit. One is more mystical or spiritual. Um, uh, the Gemara in Kedushin says that the Torah is a psalm. It's a psalm. It's an antidote to the Yetzir Hara. So the Torah does have some powerful, mystical, inexplicable, um, or perhaps not inexplicable, but one we don't necessarily understand intuitively, uh, effect on the soul. Just the, the, the benefits of learning Torah, there's just something about it that sensitizes the human neshama to, to doing good, to wanting to come close to God. So that's one. Uh, an, another possible uh, benefit here is that Rabbi Gershonfeld says, he, he quotes a Chazal which states, Hama'or sheba lamutav, right? The light in the Torah will bring you back to the good. And Rabbi Gershonfeld is careful to say that the, the Chazal do not say it'll bring you back to keeping Shabbos, keeping kosher. That's not what it says. It says it'll bring you back to the good. It'll, it has a restorative effect to our character. That is one of the benefits of learning Torah. And that has a certain a certain um, benefit over Derech Heretz in terms of there's something intrinsic, it'll bring you back to the good in a way that Derech Heretz cannot. Um, so those are some ideas. And just to go back to the government uh, idea, I read this in Rabbi Jonathan Sachs's book, The Great Partnership. I was blown away when I read this. He says like this, Here, here's one of the issues about when people kind of defer to the government more than their own sense of personal responsibility. Here, and, and I quote, it's in the chapter Morality, page 161. Social cohesion is precisely what religion sustains and much else undermines. When societies grow affluent, when the burden of law-abidingness falls on the state and its institutions, when people define right and wrong in terms of externalities, punishments and rewards, and in terms of what other people do and are seen to get away with, when people focus as they naturally do on immediate benefits, not long-term sustainability, then society begins to erode from within and there is little anyone can do to halt it. The signs are unmistakable, and he quotes, People lose a sense of shame. Rudeness is taken as a sign of sophistication. People pursue the pleasure of the moment. They lose their respect for elders. The young no longer defer to the old, and the old but behave as if they were young. The difference between the sexes is blurred. People get irritated by the least touch of authority, and they dislike any rules that inhibit their freedom to do as they like. End quote. A Christian evangelical bemoaning the secularism of Athens? No. Plato speaking about the democracy of Athens. That's in Plato's Republic. So we see that there is something critical about the Torah that the government cannot give us and can never give us. And when people focus too much on what the government is supposed to do, we, I think, naturally tend to slide and say, we're not person responsible. We'll leave it over there.